Mercy of our Divine Mother. Our Divine Mother says, People believe that the grace means making everything smooth for all your life. It is not true. The grace works for the realization of your aspiration and everything is arranged to gain the most prompt, the quickest realization. With always our love and blessings, says our Divine Mother. Sri Aurobindo's Savitri Book 4, The Book of Birth and Quest Canto 1, The Birth and Childhood of the Flame Page 401 In this high signal moment of the gods Answering Earth's yearning And her crying for bliss, a greatness from our other countries came. A silence in the noise of earthly things immutably revealed the secret word. A mightier influx filled the oblivious clay. A lamp was lit, a sacred image made. A mediating ray has touched the earth, bridging the gulf between man's mind and God's, translating heaven into a human shape. Its brightness linked our transience to the unknown. A spirit of its celestial source, aware descended into earth's imperfect mouth and wept, not fallen to mortality, but looked on all with large and tranquil eyes. One had returned from the transcendent plains and bore anew the load of mortal breath, who had striven of old with our darkness and our pain. She took again her divine, unfinished task, survivor of death and the aeonic years. Once more, with her fathomless heart, she fronted time. Again there was renewed, again revealed, the ancient closeness by earth vision we the secret contact broken off in time a constant unity of earth and heaven between the human portion toiling here and an as yet unborn limitless force Seigneur, l'année se meurt et notre gratitude s'incline devant toi. Seigneur, l'année renaît et notre prière s'élève vers toi. Que cela soit pour nous aussi l'aurore d'une vie nouvelle. Supernu antarikshan yakhyat Gavir vipa haya surahasunita Words of our Lord Sri Aurobindo and our Divine Mother's works taken from the collective works of our Lord Sri Aurobindo Topic The Need and the Call Our Lord Sri Aurobindo says two things are needed if thou wouldst follow the steep and difficult way of integral yoga, the need and will within thee and the call of the spirit. The need is the need of the soul, awakened or awaking or striving to come to the surface. For all other may be transitory or false, but the soul's need is lasting and true. 
thy soul's need of divine light and the spirit's perfection can alone bear thee across the darkness of the many nights through which thou hast passed or must pass beyond the open or hidden pitfalls of the road, past the dangers of the precipice and the morass, through the battle with chained forces and the clutching of hands that mislead and the delusions of the night and the twilight, through false and light and elusive glamour, triumph over the blows and ordeals and nets and temptations of the gods, and on and up to the immeasurable summits. Victory in this effort depends upon the sincerity within you, the purity of your aspiration, the burning core of your faith, the absoluteness of your will and surrender. Change of Consciousness, the Meaning of Integral Yoga Our Lord Sri Aurobindo says, Yoga is a means by which one arrives at union with the truth behind things through an inner discipline which leads us from the consciousness of the outward and apparent to the consciousness of the inner and real. Yoga consciousness does not exclude the knowledge of the outer apparent world, but it sees it with the eyes of an inner and not an outer seeing and experience, alters and sets right all its values in the light of an inner, deeper, greater, truer consciousness and applies to it the law of reality, exchanging the laws of the creature's ignorance for the rule of a divine will and knowledge. A change of consciousness, says our Lord, is the whole meaning of the process of integral yoga. Yoga, says our Lord, is the science, the process, the effort and action by which man attempts to pass out of the limits of his ordinary mental consciousness into a greater spiritual consciousness. Yoga is in its essence a passage from the ordinary consciousness in which we are aware only of appearances into a higher wider, deeper consciousness in which we become aware of realities and of the one reality. Not only do we become aware of it, but we can live in it and act from it according to it instead of living in and according to the appearances of the things around. Integral yoga is a passage from ignorance to self-knowledge from our apparent to our true being, from an outer phenomenal mental vital material life existence to an inner spiritual existence and a spiritualized nature. By integral yoga, we pass from phenomenal to the real man, from the consciousness of our own apparent outer nature to the consciousness of our real self, Atman, an inner and inmost man, Purusha, that which we truly and eternally are. This self or the true being remains constant through all the changes of our phenomenal being, changes of the mind, life, body or the changes of our personality, it is permanent, perpetual and immortal, a portion or a manifestation of the eternal. A large Aurobindo says, by integral yoga, we pass also from our consciousness of the phenomenal appearance or appearances of the cosmos or the world around us to a consciousness of its truth and reality. We become aware of the world as a manifestation of an universal being 
who is the true truth of all that we see, hear and experience. We become aware of a cosmic consciousness which is the secret of the cosmic energy, cosmic self or spirit, the cosmic divine, the universal Godhead. But by yoga, we become aware also that our own self or the true being is one with the cosmic self and spirit, our nature, a play of the cosmic nature, the wall between ourselves and the universe begins to disappear and vanishes altogether. We realize the self, same pantheos in ourselves and in others and in all universal existence. But also by integral yoga, we become aware of something that is more than our individual being and more than the cosmic being, a transcendent being or existence which is not dependent on ours or the existence of the universe. Our existence is a manifestation of and in that being, the cosmos also is a manifestation of and in that one supreme existence. This then is the truth or reality to which we arrive by yoga, a one and a supreme being or existence and power of being which manifests as a cosmic self or spirit and a cosmic energy or nature and in that again as our own self or spirit which becomes aware of itself as an individual being and nature. Next subtopic, the aim of integral yoga. Our Lord Sri Aurobindo says, it is the aim of all yoga to pass by a change of consciousness into the reality that is behind things and live no longer in their appearance to enter into some kind of union or communion or participation in that is the common objects of all yoga. But the reality presents itself to the consciousness of man, the mental being, under many aspects. We seek after union or closeness to the divine and whatever may be, we meet the divine as a personal Godhead or as an impersonal existence. A God of love or compassion attracts us or a God of might and power. It is a divine friend who meets us or a divine master or a world father or world mother or an almighty lord of all or a divine lover. We are in the presence of a cosmic spirit in whose universal consciousness we lose our separate ego or a supracosmic absolute in whom we lose altogether our cosmic as well as our individual existence. We find our own highest self or the self of all self. We pass into the sublime mystery without relation or feature whether neither self nor all can exist any longer. Or it may be the inexpressible mystery of an original nihil that abolishes for us all suffering and along with all the existence or else that nihil may be a mystic. All that is far other than the false and the illusory being created for us by mind and life experience. Integral yoga, says our Lord, is our union with some being or some reality which is greater than ourselves or is our own greatest and realest self. Our own greatest and real self, it is that which by yoga we join and enter into or become. All yoga strives towards union with the highest, the spirit, the self, the divine, or whatever other name or aspect we seize of one eternal 
and one infinite. And by union, we mean first constant contact and increasing with the consciousness of the divine or the infinite, then to assimilate it or assimilate ourselves to it, then to become not only like it and full of it, but to enter into it and dwell in it, to become that divine consciousness and being, essence of its essence, and so abolish all division that separates us from the divinity from whom we came. In the end, a union, a closeness, a constant companionship in the soul with the divine and yet more wonderful oneness and in living. To be one with the eternal is the object of integral yoga. There is no other object because all other aims are included in this one divine perfection. To be one with the eternal is to be one with him in being, consciousness, power and delight. All that is, is summed up in these four terms of the infinite, for all these are but their workings. To be one with the eternal is also to live in the eternal and in his presence and from his infinite nature. Sayujya, Salokya, Samipya, Sadrasya these four together are one way of being and one perfection. To live in the eternal is also to live with the eternal within us. Whosoever consciously inhibits his being, his conscious presence inhibits. God lives and moves and acts in us when we live and move and act in him. Our Lord says to be one in all ways of Thai being with that which is the highest, this is integral yoga. To be one in all ways of Thai being with that which is the all, this is integral yoga. To be one in Thai spirit with Thai understanding and Thai heart in all Thai members with the God, in humanity, this is integral yoga. To be one with all nature and all beings, this is integral yoga. All this is to be one with God in his transcendence and his cosmos and all that he has created in his being. Because from him all is and all is in him and he is all and in all and because he is thy highest self and thou are one with him in thy spirit and a portion of him in thy soul and at play with him in thy nature and because this world is a scene in his being in which he is thy secret master and lover and friend and the Lord and sustainer and aim of all thou art, therefore is oneness with him the perfect way of thy being. A Lord Sri Aurobindo says, the human being on earth is God's plane at humanity in a world of matter under the conditions of a hampered density with the altier intention of imposing law of spirit on matter and nature of deity upon nature. Evolution is nothing but the progressive unfolding of spirit out of density of material consciousness and the gradual self-revelation of God out of this apparent animal being. Yoga is the application for this process of divine self-revelation of the supreme force of tapas by which God created the world and supports it and will destroy it. It substitutes always some direction, direct action of an infinite divine force. It substitutes always some direct action of an infinite divine force for the limited workings of our fettered animal humanity. It uses divine means in order to rise to divinity. 
all yoga is tapasya and all siddhi of yoga is the accomplishment of godhead either by identity or by relation with the divine being in its principles or personality or in both or simultaneously by identity and relation our lord shri aurobindo says the aim put before itself by yoga is god its method is tapasya god is all and that which exceeds and transcends the all there is nothing in existence which is not god but god is not anything in that existence except symbolically in image to his own consciousness humanity also is a symbol or eidolon of god who we are made in his image we are made in his image and by that is meant not a formal image but the image of his being and personality the essence of divinity and its quality the divine being and the divine knowledge there are in everything existing phenomenally as we say symbolically two parts the thing in itself and the symbol self and nature immutable being and mutable becoming that which is supernatural in it and that which is natural everything in the existence has something in it which seeks to transcend itself matter moves towards becoming life life moves towards becoming mind mind moves towards becoming ideal truth ideal truth rises to become divine and infinite spirit the reason is that every symbol being a partial expression of god reaches out to seeks to become its own entire reality it aspires to become its real self by transcending its apparent self thing that is made is attracted towards thing that is becoming towards being natural to supernatural symbol towards thing in itself nature towards god agne stomam manamah siddhamadya divisprishah devasya dravidasya vah bhuvatvamagane sapradhayase dushto hota varanyah tvaya yagam vikanuvate जसातमं 